And to know more about the latest development in Italy, we now have our contributor in Italy, Riska Wolandari. So Riska, please go ahead with your report. What happened and how's the development of uh, the passing of Berlusconi? Yes, uh, Mr. Berlusconi was uh, attended to the hospital since Friday and he was uh, suffering from uh, leukemia and also some breast problems. And uh, the doctor said he keep um, having problem. And today we received the message that he passed away. And now I'm in the hospital of San Raffaele, Milan, Italy. And here I saw, I saw also some journalists here to waiting for Mr. Berlusconi uh, and the family. And uh, in this hospital is also owned by Berlusconi. And that's why he also admitted to this hospital. Mm. So, Riska, I heard that this is not the first time where Berlusconi rushed uh, to the hospital. So, he had been rushed to the hospital since 2020 uh, from a combination of diseases. Is that right? Yes, correct. He has uh, several problems with health. And uh, he always admitted it here to San Rafaele, but so far he always uh, survived and uh, succeeded. Uh, um, facing the, the situation, her, her, his health problem. But unfortunately, today we heard the sad news from uh, his hospital mm. and his uh, team of team doctor. So, um, you know, the la sorry, please go ahead. Please go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying, telling you that until today we haven't get any information from mm. official uh, when will the the ceremony or the burial ceremony will be done and uh, where. And so that's why we, uh, we the journalists, still waiting in front of the hospital. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, Riska, we'll be looking forward for any update from you from Italy. Thank you so much for uh, giving us the latest update. update. Thank you, Riska. Mm -hmm. Stay All safe. Right. Yes, yeah, so um, Mr. Berlusconi, he was um, former Archi Milan president mm -hmm. and he ran for twice i guess um as the prime minister of italy Probably three yes. times three times yeah. three times thrice yeah three times and he has been having this uh lung problem for a long time actually yeah. and also the um leukemia yeah. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately uh, not all of them were being dis disclosed yeah. to a lot of people so yeah but he's already 86 and unfortunately after the three day uh, at the hospital mm -hmm. now he passed away all right we're gonna give away to see the story segment so mm -hmm. After this, we're going to go to the segment. Hi everyone, welcome to the segment of the 3 Hour News Show, which is See the Stories, our favourite segment. And we want to talk about something that is special to the hearts of many people, which mm -hmm. is street children. Mm -hmm. So street children, we saw a lot in the previous years here in Jakarta, yes. when you drive and all that. But nowadays, it got less and less, which is good. Which yep. is good. Which is yeah. good. So uh, they're often seen to be negative when they're out on the road because these children never received proper education nor treatment. That's right. Luckily, there are many communities that aim to break that stigma. And one of them is Happy Place Indonesia. Devi Janiska Shalihi established a community of young people that focuses on the education of street children. Happy Place Indonesia offers various classes for these children, such as aptitude and interest, counseling, art, and more. Currently, Happy Place Indonesia teaches more than 1,000 street children in Bengkulu. Wow. And it's very really noble. Very noble and very interesting to know more about um, what um, Happy Place has been doing. And to know more about the matter and the activities, we are now connected with Happy Place Indonesia community founder, Devi Janiska Salih from Bengkulu. So, Jessica, um, how are you doing? Janiska, sorry, Janiska, how are you doing, Janiska? <laughs> Hello, Kak. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hope you're doing great. Yes, it's uh, Rory, yeah. Alia, and Maria here. <laughs> yes. So, okay. yeah, we want to talk about Happy Place. First of all, please tell us, how did you come up, come about to build this Happy Place community in Bengkulu? 
Okay, yeah, of course. So, um, my desire to create a community appear uh, by accident, which is not from my sense of empathy. Uh, the process of growing empathy in myself and finally decided to form a happy place community come from a long journey. Uh, since I was four years old, actually, wow. and I have like to, yeah, I <laughs> I have like to read the books that mm-hmm. tell stories about community and social issues, even though uh, some of the stories still have picture and some are novels. Besides that, near my house there is a slum housing where there are many children who drop out of school. One of them is my classmate. And at the time I was in uh, first grade, mm. uh, well, well, at the time I very sad to know that my friends have to collect money first before they can go to school. I see. And now uh, finally I decided to summarize my textbook and share them with my friends and other children who drop out of mm. school there. Mm. So they can learn uh, school lesson too. I don't know if my little action will help them and make them happy or not, but I just want to try as much as I can. Right. And uh, I when I was of fifth grade, there was a transfer student who was an orphan. On the first day of her moving, he was already being bullied by, by my mm-hmm. classmate. And the mm-hmm. bullying got worse day to day. Mm-hmm. They burned uh, my friend's ears and thought they was just a playing. Uh, so I kept reporting this to my teacher. After followed uh, by my teacher, my friends even did this outside of school. All right. And so, then excited. Okay, Daphne, yeah. I believe your action and initiative has been, you know, um, influential and crucial yep. for yep. the development of the children. And we heard that you often give um, sort of, you know, books with mm. school notes to the street children. Why do you do that? All right. Uh, I love that. I think that desire was so firm because empathy that growing from uh, reading book uh, mm-hmm. and seeing what so what happened in front of me. Uh, and uh, my friend for whom I made a summary for my book for him to study took me on an adventure to find a treasure and play together after school. And suddenly that day, he he looked sad and said that. He couldn't go to school first and could only go to school next year due to economic problems. And uh, it made me very sad and uh, looking for a way he can go back to school. I tried to tell my classmate who knows by saying we can help pay his uh, school fees so he can go back to school. And uh, however, that didn't work because the bank was, uh, was just a panic. Uh, I remember my teacher had told me that if you can get a class champion, you should also teach your friends who have difficulty accessing lessons. And finally, I decided to help my friends uh, through writing. I summarized the lesson I learned at school uh, in beautiful and colorful writing. Mm-hmm. Then I bound them with my allowance, although my allowance at that time was only 100 a day. So I had to self uh, step up of two days for buying several books. I distributed uh, the book to my friend so he could uh, learn school lessons. I always give the book every month, uh, and I don't know whether my little action will benefit my friends or not. Right. I just, uh, I just wanna help them, uh, help him. Ah, oh, I see. And uh, okay, Devi. And uh, what kind of activities does Happy Place? do to help children, this street children, reach their dreams? All right. So, actually, I do uh, to support their dreams from my active, from my projects in my community. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are various projects that have been implemented to support their dreams, uh, namely talk show, class inspiration, 30-minute reading challenge to ah. increase interest of reading culture, talent training to explore the potential of the children, which uh, they can later actualize to take part in various competency events uh, that will give uh, them experience and explore themselves. Uh, Doyle, fairy, Doyle, mm-hmm. Doyle fairy tale as a medium for learning while uh, well playing, counseling, cra- uh, noble and painting together, creating 
um, a mentari anak podcast hmm. uh, with the street children share love heart to others uh, study time after the making a boot name um, a million dreams study hmm. tours to invite street children to tourist spot for healing and studying yeah uh, A wishing trees as a written evidence of the hopes of sweet children that must be realized. Right. I, I, so, yeah. Sorry, Devi. So I assume that you met with a lot of street children, right? Mm-hmm. So have you found any difficulties in you know trying to interact with mm-hmm. the street children, knowing that you know they are raised on the street basically, and they knew how to get the money instantly on the street, and then now you want to create sort of a different. A dream for them. So, what are the difficulties found when you try to tell them, "Hey, you have a big dream ahead, but not always on the road. You have other options." So, what are the difficulties? Yeah, it can be denied. The difficulties are um, they are very busy working. Actually, from morning to night, even though some are at school, they must go strike to work after school. So, I'm a little reluctant. to disrupt their work. However, it turned out that uh, when I gave them a cute and unique invitation to join the happiness activity, they were very interested and come to the event. And second, they are often uh, monitored by seniors, foster mother, and even uh, their biological mothers mm. who exploit them to continue working yeah. so that the people who disrupt them will be asked by their seniors. It happened once so the happy place team want to invite them to an event but uh, I'm grateful it was completely well that there were there were also uh, their biological mother who support them in participating in the happy place activity and even their biological mother accompanied them in uh, the activity. All right. So Daffy, we all believe that children if they are given equal opportunity they can unleash their true potential, their biggest dreams. What are, in your opinion, the biggest potential of the street children that you have been taking care of? Yeah, um, previously I was also curious about this at that time. Uh, we once did a podcast with street children and they want to export expensive things like mm. handphone. Uh, oh, um, I'm sorry, you asked about potential, right? Yes, yes. the potential. Yes. I'm sorry, okay. Um, I think uh, the potential of street children, uh, they are brief, um, they are independent, and they are strong. Uh, I believe that this potential, uh, if supported by a supportive environment, they can reach more than uh, we imagine, and uh, their high dreams can certainly be achieved. I uh, just imagine that a terrible and harsh environment can make them survive, especially in the environment is supportive and they can learn more freely. Uh, I'm also touched by their happiness, which is a very simple, that is, they just want to be at their, uh, be with uh, their families. And I think they are a good kids who need to be embraced together. Mm-hmm. Okay, Devi, from your story, we can tell that your community has helped street children tremendously, especially in Bengkulu. But uh, what about the collaboration with a government there? Uh, has there ever been one or two collaborations or something that has been going on for quite some time? Yeah, uh, the, the collaboration is uh, very important and uh, the team is uh, like a family too. And The happy place uh, doing collaboration with external parties. The happy place community can be uh, um, collaboration with government or non-government, even uh, mass media too, such as a social service, the PPA, the KKBN, a tourism office, Bungkulu Province Children Forum, Bungkulu Province Gendre Forum, Bungkulu Province Oasis Forum, Bungkulu Express, and many more. Mm. Um, this collaboration, uh, I think, will support activities in various ways. 
uh, such as uh, become a speaker, working on uh, joint projects according to the field, material yeah. and immaterial assistance, media partner, and other that mm. will gen- generate new ideas. So have a plus activity can be cooler and have a wider impact. Yeah, so you've done a lot of um, actions and a lot of collaborations. So I suppose now you maybe you know might as well expand the community. Is mm. it is it in your um, roadmap? Yeah, is it in your agenda for the future? Maybe other cities in Indonesia? Yeah, uh, of course. I really want to have a place community have a wider impact on various regions in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, Happy Place activity have been carried out by the Happy Place team in Bali. This made them uh, feel that they know and understand more about the, the life of street children. Uh, apart from that, the uh, children also feel that Happy Place activity make them happy because they can tell stories with Happy Place team while leaving their work uh, for a while. Uh, they also receive a uh, parcel and prize to answering quizzes, so they felt the activity were very exciting. And more, moreover, uh, the impact resulting from Happy Place activity carried out uh, in Bukuru also had a positive impact. Um, um so the positive impact like uh, the realizing the courage of the dream higher increasing awareness of the importance of education increasing motivation to learn improve hard skills soft skill etc so i think i really want to expand have a community to other regions in That's indonesia great. all right so davy janiska salihi from um happy, happy place, place indonesia happy community place indonesia. yes thank you so much for your time Thank you so much, Devi. Thank you so much. Best of luck for Happy Place community. Yeah, it's Thank always you. it's always very sad when yeah. you you know you know you're you're on the road and you're yeah. driving your car and then yeah. you look at the windows yeah, and yeah. there are like kids. Yeah. I have um I have two friends actually. Minus. They are nicknamed Ibu Guru Kembar. So ah, yeah, Ibu Guru Kembar, Ibu them. Rosi and Ibu um Ibu Rosita and Ibu um Ibu Ros. Hang on, I forgot the name. Rosie Ibu and Rosa? Rosita <laughs> and Ibu Rina, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So they are twins, mm. right? And they take care of uh, children living under the Anchal Bridge in yeah. North Jakarta. Yeah. And the way they do, it sparks a lot of questions. Like, why would you do that for not- for free? Why would you yeah. like use your personal money to fund them and to uh, yeah. get them to school? And why do you have I mean, to like, you know, um, take um, some unattended children or children without the you know uh, attention of their parents to Jakarta to send them to school lots of questions going around but they said that they just want to do good to the community they want to help children as many as possible it's a rhetorical question I mean if you cannot get help from outside and you have the will to do that you would might as well you just use your money exactly and no matter where you're from whether you're from the street yeah whether you're from uh, you know, a wealthy family. Mm. If you are as children giving, given a an equal opportunity, yeah. then you can be a successful yes. person as yes. well. One thing, and, Davey mentioned, and it doesn't matter if we have a little to give. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, they're willing to give that matter most, matter. right? Yeah. Davey mentioned a very important message. I guess the, these t- children are very much uh, having the survival mode that yep. maybe yep. not a lot of children have. Yep. So yep. they have one thing that they are good at. Yep. So, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And that's going to be a good capital to move forward in life, right? Yes. Agree. All right. See, the stories will still continue after the break, so don't go anywhere.